First, the real shocker here is an oil company coming out and a cloud company coming in. ExxonMobil is not just any oil company. It is a colossus that bestrides the world. Ten years ago, this was the biggest company on Earth. It shrunk since then. But even four years ago, it was, with, it was the fourth largest. Exxon was always considered the safest, most conservative oil play. But over the last few years, it lost that crown to Chevron, which is why Chevron is probably going to be staying in the Dow. In fact, Exxon now makes me a little nervous because it's got an 8.5% dividend, which suggests that a lot of investors believe that dividend will have to be slashed. What a stunning fall from grace for one of the greatest blue chips of all time. In its place, we're getting Kramer Fave, Salesforce. The cloud kingpin that now has a larger market cap than Exxon. Oh, these are two perfect foils. Exxon, which was founded in 1870 when it was the bedrock of Rockefeller's old Standard Oil Company. Salesforce just turned 21. It came public in 2004. And since then, the stock's up uh, 770, 7,700%, 7,700. Eh, what's that, right? 7,700% from its IPO price. Exxon's arguably the world's leading contributor to global warming. Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, is trying to plant three trillion trees to recapture that carbon. Good trade. I think this is a fantastic move. Exxon represents the fuel of the old economy, oil and gas. Salesforce represents the fuel of the new economy, code, cloud, digitization. I know it's a business to business operation, but as someone who's run a business, I can tell you that we had a 30 percent boost not long after Salesforce was installed. We'll flesh this story out further when we talk to Mark Benioff later in the show about his remarkable quarter. But the key here is something I've been saying for a while. Oil and gas is simply not investable for the long term. I'm doubling down on that view. All right, how about swapping out Pfizer for Amgen? Okay, and I'm a little torn here, okay? Uh, sure, maybe Pfizer's too much like fellow travelers Johnson & Johnson and Merck. If that's the case, I'm going to go with a medical instruments play. How about Thermo Fisher? They're, how about Abbott Labs? So I'm a big holder of my charitable trust. Monster good. Uh, these are amazing companies, but it seems like they specifically wanted some biotech to highlight the industry's increasing relevance. So fine, let's accept that the Dow needs a biotech. Why well, Amgen, though? This is one of the great growth stocks of our era. It is up 72,000% since its IPO in 1983, but it's no spring chicken. Amgen is more like the face of biotech in 2000 than the face of biotech in 2020. I'm sure the Pfizer people are scratching their heads as the growth rates are actually similar. And Pfizer is almost 4% yield. As a portfolio manager, I, I wouldn't make this call. But they wanted a biotech, and Amgen is the biggest biotech, although definitely not the best or the most representative. I would go there with some others that I write about all the time. Finally, there's the Raytheon for Honeywell swap. Now, this is a ver very interesting one, and I'm going to tell you why, because this has not anything having to do with Raytheon. You see... Um, it's, a, it's so straightforward that it's basically housekeeping. When the old United Technologies split into three companies, they merged their aerospace business with Raytheon, spinning off Otis Elevators. We had them on. Great story. A carrier of the climate equipment control. The old United Technologies was a diversified industrial. The new Raytheon's an aerospace and defense play that's way too similar to another Dow Jones compadre, Boeing. Meanwhile, Honeywell looks a lot like the pre-breakup United Technologies. They got an aerospace division that's roughly 37% of the business. They also got building technologies division, performance materials, safety and productivity solutions. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.